highly suggest that if you're going to record a YouTube video that you don't order Boba. It's incredibly distracting. Anyway, this is why you, a JavaScript developer, should learn Rust in 2022. First of all, Rust complements your skill set. Rust, much like JavaScript, is a general purpose language, which means that a lot of the reasons that you would use JavaScript are the same reasons you would use Rust. This is really good because it means that we can use Rust in the same places that we use JavaScript. However, Rust is not going to replace your Vue, Svelte, React, etc. skills. And Rust is not about to replace JavaScript in the general browser UI use case. Rust complements the skills you already have by enabling you to write high performance, maintainable applications in areas like serverless or CLI tools. The second reason that you should learn Rust in 2022 is an integrated tool set. You'll feel right at home with Cargo, Rust's package manager, because it feels a lot like using NPM. The biggest difference is that Cargo comes with many features built in. NPM lets us initialize projects, run binaries, run scripts, and more recently work with workspaces. Cargo also has these built in. The package JSON and package lock files that you're used to seeing, or yarn lock if you're used to seeing that, are mirrored by cargo.toml and cargo.lock. This is where it starts to get interesting. When we want to start testing our projects, we need a test runner, an assertions library, and maybe more things in JavaScript land. In Rust, these are built in with cargo test. Similarly, for building apps and libraries, linting, auto-fixing lint rules, type checking, generating documentation, and auto-formatting. With JavaScript, we need a different package for each of these use cases. Prettier, TypeScript, ESLint, etc. With Rust and Cargo, these tools are built in and you can access them without having to install third-party packages. Cargo and Rust even go above and beyond what we're used to with NPM and Yarn and these other tools by including features like benchmarks. The integrated tooling has a real impact on the day-to-day -day experience of using Rust. Integration and unit tests become something you can just throw in to support your development workflow, as opposed to something that you would need to go research, discover, install, set up, and configure a third-party package for. In JavaScript, we also have to pre-bundle and pre-build our libraries when publishing to NPM. This causes an explosion of complexity both in the publishing step, which restricts people from being able to publish in the first place, and also on the consuming side, when you go to actually use somebody else's library. There's a lot of complexity that goes into publishing an NPM packet. In Rust, different versions of the Rust language are known by the compiler. And thus, if you have a crate that you want to use on crates.io, the equivalent of the NPM registry, the Rust compiler knows how to compile a 2015 Rust project into your 2020 Rust project. This is something we're sorely missing in the JavaScript ecosystem, where we have to install and configure our own additional, additional third-party tools to be able to use JavaScript written in different dialects. Reason three is going to be that parts of the Rust language are leaking into JavaScript. While far from being the only influence on the JavaScript language, Rust is often cited as prior art in TC39 proposals like pattern matching. Learning a language that these language features are already in means that when they come to JavaScript, you'll already know how to use them and you'll have experience having used them and know the pitfalls that you could potentially run into. This also extends to languages like TypeScript. By learning Rust, you'll understand more about how TypeScript's trade-offs affect the language. And when you need to go debug it, you'll have more context for how these are built into a language that is meant to have them from the start. And you can combine that with your knowledge of JavaScript to understand why TypeScript made the choice it did. Reason number four goes in the other direction. Many parts of JavaScript are becoming Rust. These days, JavaScript isn't just the language. It's the ecosystem of developer tools and the dialects we choose to write to create better experiences for our users. Mainstream tools like SWC, which is a Babel competitor written in Rust, are becoming more and more commonplace. Next.js, Parcel, Apollo GraphQL, and Relay are just a few of the converts making the jump to writing their infrastructure in Rust. While you'll probably never have to know Rust to just use these tools, understanding Rust will give you an additional edge when it comes to actually debugging them and understanding what happens when they go wrong. There are many other reasons to learn Rust, from the queer-friendly welcoming community to the understandable and easy-to-parse error messages. And yes, writing performant programs that use fewer resources is easier in Rust than it is in JavaScript. That's not really the selling point that I think is the strongest here though. And during your journey learning Rust, you'll start hearing a lot of people talk about memory management or memory safety and other terms that are fairly unfamiliar and don't really click for people who come from JavaScript. When do we hit a null pointer exception when writing JavaScript anyway? Understand that these talking points are aimed at a different context than we have as JavaScript developers. 
they're often aimed at explaining to C programmers why they should use Rust. And in C, you have far less memory safety and it's far easier to shoot yourself in the foot than when using a higher level language like JavaScript. In the end, Rust is a high level general purpose language that complements your JavaScript skills. While it does include new concepts like ownership, which will take some time to learn, it empowers you to write code for high level use cases like serverless functions and CLI tools, as well as expanding the range of applications that you can write into lower level tools like operating systems, networking, or bare metal Raspberry Pis. All while feeling like you're writing a language that, frankly, to me, feels like I'm writing JavaScript. If I've convinced you and you're interested in learning more about Rust, why don't you go write your first Rust application by following the rest of the playlist. And I'm gonna get back to drinking my boba.